All right, let's talk about healthy mashed potatoes, but we're gonna use cauliflower instead. I've taken two heads of cauliflower, chopped them up, put them in a food processor, and then steam them. Now here's the trick, people. You need a cheesecloth, and you need to put that mixture in the cheesecloth and drain it. And when you think you've done enough, do it some more, get a good workout. After that, I go ahead and I put it back into my mixer, and I use a little bit of milk, some sour cream and some cheese. I like white cheese because it whitens up the mixture. Get it to the consistency you like, bake it, and voila, you have cauliflower mash, which is gluten-free, grain-free, low carb, instead of your traditional mashed potatoes. So I've cut, already cut up my florets of cauliflower and then I put them in the food processor to, to grind up and then I've just steamed the cauliflower. Now here's the trick and here's why I've made, wait, excuse me, why I've waited until this step to show you. So I have a tea towel, but you can use a milk bag, that would be even better. And I've put my cauliflower more than I anticipate that I need and I've wrapped it with a bowl. Now, here's what I wanna show you. Just lifting it after steaming it. So take your florets, cut them up, put them in the food processor, then steam them. You're gonna see the liquid just draining out already and I haven't even begun to squeeze. Now I'm going to get my exercise for the day. <laughs> and I'm going to squeeze this until I can't squeeze an ounce of water out of it again. Look at how much liquid I got out of that. And there's even more to squeeze. Just when you think you've squeezed it all, squeeze one more time because you'll get even more. Now that is the sweet spot of your cauliflower, look at how crumbly it is. The water is gone. And be careful because this is this is cool, but when you get it out of the steamer, it's gonna be hot, hot. But I've drained all the water and that's the consistency you want. Oh, and that's a chunk that didn't get processed. So I'm pulling that out. It's a good thing I'm feeling it for you. Oh, oh, another chunk. All right. Hopefully your processor works better than mine. But it's very dry. You're not getting any liquid out of this. It sounds liquidy, but you're not. Make sure your hands are clean, of course, or you're going to be touching your food like this. Oh, and another piece. I want those big pieces in there. All right. Now I've transferred my cut up cauliflower florets that went into my food processor to be ground, that then went into the steamer, that then got drained with a tea towel. It's now in my mixing bowl, and I'm gonna add cheese, sour cream, a little bit of Maple Hill milk. I'm using Maple Hill milk, and I'm gonna mix it with my KitchenAid. Okay, a little bit of sour cream. I would say a quarter of a cup for the two heads of cauliflower and about half a cup of Parmesan cheese. And let's mix this. And then I used um, a quarter of a cup of maple home milk. Now, after you put your ingredients in, and I just put it into my mixer, but I wanted to show you, you can have different consistency, right? Some mashed potatoes are a little bit chunkier than others or you can blend it even more and put a little bit more cream, uh, milk in it and butter and sour cream and cheese, you know, all the good things. You can put chives in it, you can put garlic in it, but if you put a little bit more liquid back, you can make it even creamier than this. Um, and I like to use a white cheese so it looks more like mashed potatoes. So I'm not quite done with this. I'm gonna put it back in my mixer. All right, now it's mixing in my mixer. And I've got the Parmesan cheese, a little maple hill milk, a little bit of sour cream. And right before I serve it, 
I'm going to heat it in the oven if I need to, or I serve it directly from this. And then I put a, a little bit of butter on it. Um, but you could add garlic, and you can add chives, and then you can add anything that you want to add, like you would to mashed potatoes, of course, salt and pepper. Now, to give you a little perspective, this is my Pyrex dish that I'll be serving it in on Thanksgiving. And we'll have traditional mashed potatoes, but this is for those people that can't eat mashed potatoes or that are watching uh, their figure and don't want Thanksgiving as an excuse. It's a small dish, um, and I can put this back in the oven, but again, that's two large heads of cauliflower. So in my mind, that makes about five to six portions of mashed potatoes. All right, happy Thanksgiving. And once you're done in the mixer and you heat it, you can put out a portion on your plate. You can see that we have it really creamy. We just put a little tiny bit of pat of butter that's already melting, some cracked pepper and salt, and voila, you have mashed potatoes. Now, this is a Thanksgiving swap, but if I was doing mashed potatoes for any other meal, I would have added some garlic, uh, which is so yummy, and probably a little bit of cheddar cheese and not just a white cheese. By the way, I mixed a little bit of Mott's with the Parmesan, you don't taste the cheese, and so it does taste like traditional mashed potatoes. It just gives it a little better texture. One final tip you don't see in any other video. You've ju I've just used this to wipe the cauliflower. I've used the tea towel to drain it, and I've used the towel to wipe my hands. I've got my two mixing bowls, and I've already washed my uh, food processor. These don't need to go in your laundry. They need to go straight into your washing machine. And let me tell you, it's very important. Otherwise, and by tomorrow, it's going to smell so bad in your laundry room. So make sure these go straight into the washing machine. And I would mix them with other towels. I wouldn't put my own clothing in there. That is a tip I learned from many years of working with cauliflower.